Hello everyone and welcome! It is that time of week for a Q&A video. Isn't that exciting? It is. It is. It is. Yeah. And if you want to partake in future Q&A videos by having your questions answered, why don't you go and follow the show on Twitter? At OTR Central is the Twitter handle. That way you know when I have these Q&As up. And that way you can also interact with me and have some fun, why don't you? And while you're at it, if it's your first time checking out this channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Do it! Do it now! Especially if you watch these videos before. Like, even if you hate me, like, why wouldn't you subscribe? So that way you can hate on me on every video as they come out. It just seems weird to me otherwise. All right, anyways, Q&A time. Let's go ahead and kick it off. See how many questions we get through today. Mukahid Killink starts us off by saying, I think the Tribal Chief would have been a perfect fit for the Ruthless Aggression Era. Imagine all the feuds he could have had with guys like Taker, Cena, Batista, HBK, Angle, Eddie, etc. when they were in good shape. Do you agree? Sure. It's Roman Reigns. It's the Tribal Chief, the head of the table. I'm trying to get my chair situated here, sorry. So, absolutely would agree that probably would have been a good fit in that era. Kyle Gardner, 92. When you are asked to induct Psycho Sid into the WWE Hall of Fame, and thank you for being assumptive with it. And thank you for trying to speak it into existence. Because we need that type of positive mojo, juju, whatever you want to call it, in the universe. What would you say and would you be able to keep composed if you see Johnny Ace in the audience? Well, let me put it to you this way. Being able to induct Psycho Sid into the WWE Hall of Fame would truly be the honor of a lifetime. And you best believe that I would spend the entire time that I was given, plus however many more minutes that I chose to take, and I defy anybody to say anything to me otherwise, like I would pump this man up like no other. I would talk about his accomplishments. I would talk about winning world titles. I would talk about you know, the fact that he was able to go into Survivor Series 96 and he turned the crowd against the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. They'd want to be like, uh -uh, can't say that. Yes, you can. It's psycho shit. And then I would try to sign up people on Hall of Fame weekend to play in softball against myself and Psycho Sid. We would dominate, rule the world, because Sid rules the world. Christopher Oliver, what was your problem with John Cena if people like Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, Triple H, and Hulk Hogan did politics? You could say they were selfish too. At least John Cena was always there for the 10 years he was on top. He worked hard, so what was the big deal? Uh, Mr. Oliver, when did I ever say that those other guys didn't engage in politics? I'm not, I'm not getting your question here. I literally call the group that Triple H and Shawn Michaels have, have the Breakfast Club for crying out loud. Where do you think that came from? Triple H, I refer to the man as God. Why the hell do you think that came into being? And if anything, I talk more about Stone Cold Steve Austin, the politics that he played over the years compared to a lot of others. The problem with John Cena was that he was on the top for so long and he was pounded down everybody's throat so damn much and that so many people were just served up on a platter to him and all the while business was decreasing but yet he was continued to be propped up in that spot. Like, it's different. But to sit there and say that I didn't make a big deal about those other ones, which is kind of what your question is implying, is a bullshit premise. And as far as John Cena, yeah, it is a bigger deal because during his decade of doom and destruction throughout WWE, Ratings went down significantly. That's the difference. F. Poor Shankar. You've always said how big of a Hogan mark you have been since your childhood, which is true. So seeing all the stupid things he has said and done, this is also incredibly true, over the years, how do you see him today? A perfect example of don't put anybody up too much on a pedestal. There is no question. I, I mean, I, I just can't change history and say that I wasn't a raging Hogan mark all these years. I can't pretend like me being a fan of Hulk Hogan, which is what led to me being a fan of professional wrestling, hasn't led to many good things happening in my life. And it all ties back to him and that. I, I can't, that that's what's so tough about it is you can't just wipe out the past and pretend like none of those things ever happened. Uh, that said, I wish he would just go the hell away. It's just, And it's not just that he said really dumb, ignorant, racist crap. It's the fact that you don't really see any contrition or remorse or real grasping or understanding of what he did and what he said. And I've called it the hypocrisy of this for others, like, and it's valid. Like, people praise Warrior, that homophobe. 
You know, people praise Ric Flair, that accused racist. You know, people praise Stone Cold Steve Austin, the kingdom fucking come, the wife beater. You know, like, but it doesn't diminish the bad that Hulk Hogan did and the lack of understanding of it, the lack of trying to make good on it, the lack of spending every day of his life trying to make right. That to me is as much the disappointment as opposed to just what he flat out said. He flat out said was dumb, ignorant, stupid, and racist, and he just doesn't get it. So it, it, it's it's distressing, it's bothersome. Perfect example: of Don't meet your heroes; they will live to disappoint you. MC Seventeen Clark, who do you think was worse for WCW, Jim Hurd or Vince Russo? In my opinion, it's Hurd because at least Russo never made the champ leave with the belt to go to the competition. Also, why does Russo get blamed for everything bad involving pro wrestling? Russo is a very easy fall guy. Very, very easy fall guy. And he gets a lot of shit. Some of it absolutely merited and deserved, and a lot of it not. You know, he, he's an easy person to hold up and say, that's what happened, that's what went wrong. And that, a lot of cases, just isn't totally the case, or not the entire story. As far as who was worse for WCW, I would think it would be Jim Hurd. Because it was Jim Hurd that sat there and force, like you said, Ric Flair didn't want to work with him. It was the one that sent Ric Flair away, where Ric Flair went to the WWF with the WCW title. It was Jim Hurd that did the crap like the ding-dongs. It, yeah, so I'll go with Jim Hurd, because he was there longer, and he was truly in charge, and he did way more bad than Vince Russo did. Uh, Mid Carter J, what was Madison Rain's greatest achievement in wrestling? Excuse me. What was Madison Rain? <laughs> greatest achievement in wrestling the fact that she could steal money from people for over a decade doing professional wrestling that's her greatest achievement Madison <laughs> power spy in one at this moment in time is it safe to say that Peyton Royce is getting the Marty Jannetty treatment whilst Billy Kay is getting the Shawn Michaels treatment no no Billy Kay is just kind of around on TV, and I give props to her for making the most out of what she has. But when Shawn Michaels turned on Marty Jannetty in that barbershop segment, like they quickly had things in place for Shawn Michaels. There was an obvious push there, like there was something planned out. There's nothing planned out for her. No, it's a bad, bad comparison. Blue Goblin Reviews. You're put in charge of hell for one day. How would you torture the invisible man? I would plop him down on the fiery couch and make him watch Dino Bravo highlights all day. That'll get it done. Uh, Christian Mingle. There's been a number of wrestlers who didn't need the WWE Championship to get over. This is true. Roddy, Jake the Snake, Rick Root, some good names to throw out there. Do you think that Hulk Hogan would have gotten over without winning the WWE Championship, or was that belt extremely important to him in his push? I think it was a mutually beneficial relationship. The belt had to go on him. Because he was going to be the guy, and you needed him to have that legitimacy. You needed him to be the true face of the company. Would he have gotten over to some degree uh, without the belt? Yes, but it just wouldn't have been the same. He had to be the champion. Um, Edsel Jerome Laurel. What was your first reaction watching Psycho Sid sacrificing his leg for us live on TV? <laughs> When somebody stopped the damn match and instead they keep wrestling. That was my first, first reaction. Uh, George, 1847-7530. That's some Twitter handle right there. Thoughts on the amazing Simon Dean gimmick? <laughs> I have no thoughts. It's so amazing it doesn't even register for me. Canadian C273, do you think AEW needs to cool it down with the tag team matches? There are way too many multi-man matches on these shows. Yes. And this is part of the problem is they've got too many people on the damn roster and they're trying to get people on TV. So admirable, like they've signed these people to contracts. They want to use them and want to give them a, a chance. But yeah, too much. You get too many schmazes of bodies and nobody stands out. And that's the problem. You get nobody stands out. Nobody's different. So yes, they need to cut it down. Uh, Chris from ATL, greatest female wrestler of all time, Candice Michelle or Alicia Fox. <laughs> hey. Let's give Alicia some credit, man. Like, her moveset was a lot better than people want to give her credit for. 
And you would think in today's wrestling where the majority of the people that actually watch wrestling only give a crap about the moves and the matches. Like, you would think Alicia Fox would have a lot more respect than what she seems to get. She's become a bit of a punchline and a joke, and that's kind of sad. So, you know, out of those two, give me Alicia Fox. Uh, tribal Believer, if you had to, the choice to make a faction for Roman Reigns, who would be in that group? Jimmy and Jay? All day? And I'd probably, you know, I'd either throw Nia Jax or Tamina in there. Like, it'd be a chance to repurpose them, a chance to repackage them, or a chance to utilize them differently. That would be my thought. And then I'd maybe add one more guy? I'm not sure who that one more guy would be. But it would certainly be Roman Reigns, it would be Jimmy and Jay, and that's it. I'd either, I'd try to really, really think about it, and it would either be, I don't want to make it entire, entirely a, a group of just like Islanders of Samoans and so forth. You've got to have your Owen Hart in the nation and domination type of thing here. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not sure. you got to have somebody else, though. Um, EJ Dennis, 96. What was your favorite Big Show feud? Oh, goodness. Um, him and The Rock? <laughs> Go back to Supercuts to get your $5 back. Alwyn to the ass. Fact or fiction? Tribal Chief on the mic is greater than John Cena on the mic. Yes. I would agree. If you're talking about the John Cena that was the corny, hokey-ass, vanilla, white bread, baby face heel for a decade, then yeah. And especially later career John Cena, like, you could just tell he really didn't care and his promos weren't really designed to do anything other than make his opponent look stupid and him look relevant. Like, I hated those. Now, if you're talking about John Cena thugonomics early career, different story. But I much prefer Tribal Chief on the mic than I do John Cena, like, C-Nation, never give up hustle, loyalty, and respect John Cena. Because Roman Reigns is you believe in. Roman Reigns, there's intensity, intensity there. John Cena, you always felt like he was just trying to sell you merch. Uh, Deluxe Man, Just Alex Central. I knew you were going to squeeze this question in. Uh, your thoughts on the U.S. Capitol attack last week and the state of the country. Um, first, for the state of the country piece, like, is this, is this surprising to anyone? Should it be? Like, you have 70 plus million people voted for Trump, so you know, obviously his messaging has resonated with a lot of folks, which is also interesting considering in no way, shape, or form are his policies designed to benefit those folks, many of whom have voted for him. Now, I'm not saying that Eat Your Vegetables Joe, Sleepy Joe is either. I'm not saying that, but um, but imagine, like, and maybe this is more of a, it's a revelation for white people that, yeah, this country's always done this shit. It might not always been as overt and out in the open, but it's always been like this. So I don't think that should be surprising for anyone. Like, this is a country where the populace got riled up you know, go to a war in Iraq, even though there was no evidence to support it. Like, this is not a very logic-based country. Like, when you think about the, the ultimate battle between empiricism and romanticism, like, America lives in the world of romanticism. It's all about sensationalism and feelings and emotions and fears. It's not about, you know, logic and reason and facts. And what's weirder is, like, the people that ascribe to that kind of Trump ideology, um, you know, try to then present their half-truths and misleading statements and lies and falsehoods as reality and truth. Like, it's really, really weird. Uh, my thoughts on the U.S. Capitol attack, um, like, no shit that happened. Like, they were talking about it for weeks that was going to happen. Like, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where I just don't even really want to think about it anymore. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Because why? Really. Because why? Like, I'm trying to do good things in my life, and I'm trying to do positive things and be positive towards people and continue to grow and improve as an individual. Like, why would I want to get sucked up into the toxic cesspool of that? Like, the people that stormed on the Capitol. Get a fucking life. Beyond the fact that those that broke in and all of that deserve to be arrested and deserve to have the book thrown at them for that stupidity. It's just, 
if you are in a place where you have to drink the Kool-Aid of a politician of all fucking people, regardless of who it is, that much, that it would drive you to do that, first, get a life, second, get a clue, third, get professional help, whatever it takes. Cultish behavior is ridiculous. Like, get a clue, get laid, get a life, I guess. Um, Jack, I'm going to ask the next question. Since you'd rather put a bullet in your head than watch Impact and ROH, have you considered giving MLW a shot? They are one-hour shows Wednesday at 7 p.m. on their new YouTube channel. Nice plug for MLW. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Doesn't mean I'd never watch them, but right now I have no interest in doing so. Uh, La Wei Wei. Ooh, it's a lady. Hello there. Well, why are you going to ask me that question? Like, of all the people you're going to ask this question, you're going to ask me about two white sluts. Really? Really? You're going to ask me to choose between Missy Hyatt or Sonny? Ugh. 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 Like, why would you do that to me? Um, Missy Hyatt because... <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler hasn't been there. At least I think. I don't believe. So yeah, that, that's, that's the decisioning process here. <laughs> Jacob Schnoor. Like, why would you do that to me though? Why, why would you ask me that question? <sighs> Anyways, Jacob Schnoor. Should Big E, Kofi, and Xavier Woods officially return to their singles personas? Why or why not? You know, personally, I think the New Day shtick has long since run its course. And the longer you go with it, the less uh, nostalgia pop and less... Uh, return the diminishing return you're going to get that when you eventually break them up and then someday try to reform them it's just not going to feel quite the same because they were doing it for too long so yeah i think they all three should have been single well before now ralphie lou many say a creative reform would solve the wwe or solve the problems for wwe yet there is a talent skills mismatch unqualified roster and unqualified management what could be done to completely reform the corporate structure is a complete reformation needed um, I think you're, you're talking about corporate structure versus on-screen product. Those are two entirely different things. Like if you think about it from a corporate structure standpoint, like they've cut expenses and done other things to create record profits and you know, good dividends, you know, all that other crap that you can do but aren't a reflection in any way on the on-screen product. So Wall Street might like it. Corporation, corporate America loves it, but... You know, the average Joe Schmo fan watching it hates their product. Um, I, I talked about it like Raw sucks and it's not just Vince McMahon's fault. It's easy to blame Vince and he deserves the lion's share of the blame because ultimately in the end of the day, he's the head honky in charge of all that you see with WWE. But nonetheless, you know, it's not like Triple H and Stephanie have done the world a lot of justice with their work over the years with the company in leadership and management positions and executive positions. It's not like the talent that you're getting in today's wrestling business is the best and brightest of all time. Sure, they can do moves, but who gives a shit? Lots of people that wrestle in their backyards can do that crap, and many of them actually try to be more interesting and try to develop characters and tell stories way more than these guys that just flippy fuck around for the hardest of hardcore nerds that, you know. So there, there are significant problems there that n no one easy fix for. Uh, Byron Andreas, what does Paul Bearer sound like when he's having sex? I don't know, because he's dead. <laughs> Hispanic Titanic, hey Jeff, hope your year is going well so far. We'll see after this question, because I'm assuming it's some bullshit. Knowing you, it is. Best Buy Rick 1, what did you ask? My question is, when I marry Jade Cargill, can you be my best man? See, now this, I knew you were going to come up with this. You've always got some type of little trolling thing you got to throw in there. What makes you think you're even in her league? What makes you think you would have any chance to win her heart over me? Really? Really? I'll say yes just to humor the thought so that way I could go there and walk off with your bride-to-be on wedding day. Give you the ultimate embarrassment. And as I yell out, I say, Best Buy Rick One, tell me, tell me, tell me how my ass tastes. You know what? Best Buy Rick One, just 
ruined the Q&A for everybody else. I'm not answering any more questions. He has pissed me off so much. So all of you can go to Twitter, follow Best Buy Rick One, because it's only fair, and go there and blame him for forcing this Q&A to end early. And tell him how silly and stupid his question just was. You go follow him. I will follow him. And we will make him pay for this transgression. But if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow the show on Twitter. Add OTR Central to Twitter handle and smash that subscribe button. And you make sure you go to Twitter and tell Best Buy Rick One that it's his fault that your Q&A question did not get answered. Because he wanted to partake in such trolling foolishness. Foolishness! Foolishness!